Hey guys, this is Alan Stewart with BNB Yacht Designs, and today I am going to be doing a virtual tour of the new Class Globe 580 kit. Um, I think we're all done with the files at this point, or at least to the point where we're ready to probably cut one of these out. So um, I just want to say thanks to Don McIntyre for uh, letting us work on this project with him. It's been um, a lot of fun so far. And when we first saw this design come out, we uh, shot an email off to him and just kind of snowballed from there. So um, sailboats are really our passion, and um, we're fortunate to uh, to have been worked on, working on this project. And I think it came out really nice, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing some of these kits go together. So um, I'll get straight into it. I've got a lot to cover. And I'm going to try to focus on the details of the kit specifically, and then the assembly, and um, and we'll just see where it goes. I'll probably put some links to various sections of the video for people who want to skip through. But um, yeah, let's get into it. All right, first I think I'll talk about some of the unique modifications, uh, or not modifications so much as additions that we've made. Uh, in the process of 3D modeling a boat that I think um, are going to be uh, instrumental in uh, the success of the kit. And so um, some early design decisions um, for the kit, was, one of which was to go with the watertight bulkhead. So um, if you're familiar with the plans or if you're not, this uh, central bulkhead here that supports the mast is frame D1. And that is a solid bulkhead, and in the kit, it'll be a solid uh, plywood bulkhead with a butt block down the middle, obviously, because it's too big to fit in a sheet. And uh, builders can choose to cut uh, a hatch here, install a, a custom uh, or an off-the-shelf hatch, um, or if you're you know, not doing a around-the-world race, you can put a regular hatch in there. Um, also, because we've put a solid ply bulkhead on the aft side of frame D1, the dimensions, the outer dimensions for this frame are to the aft side. And so the um, size of this frame is different to what's shown on the plans. It's slightly larger. And so if you're building from plans and you'd like to build this frame as a solid bulkhead, um, as shown here, then we'll give you a sheet that has um, the... Uh, the different dimensions for the aft side of, of D1. Um, the other bulkhead back here, which is frame A, um, yeah, frame A, it's also going to be cut solid in the kit. Um, the plans show a hatch here at the bottom of the bunk, but um, in the um, uh, racing version, this would be a solid watertight bulkhead, and if it did have a hatch, it would be one that was, um, you know, sealable uh, off the shelf hatch or a panel that was glued in place. Um, in the cockpit, we have no uh, we have no hatch built in here. Um, B and B has uh, a nice watertight hatch design that I have not modeled, but uh, we can provide plans for that, you know, separately if somebody wanted to do a, a build their own hatch. Of course, you could put a um, off-the-shelf hatch, you know, in the top of the seat top here. Uh, moving forward, um, in the kit, we've included the, the side of the bunk, uh, and that will come into play later when I show you the assembly of the kit. Uh, we've also included the bunk top panels and the, um, the galley box here. So uh, as per Don's... Um, uh, request, uh, at least this is how he's going to do it on his boat. Instead of a 2.2 meter bunk, we have a 2 meter bunk. And uh, bear with me while I turn on some people. Um, so here's a guy sleeping in a 2 meter bunk, and it's it's a generous uh, bunk space. Um, and that gives you the galley box here. You can have your athwart ship sleeping arrangement with a lift out sole panel. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do with the galley here. There's this this box is port and starboard in the kit. Um, we've included every every piece uh, of plywood with the exception of uh, some of the companionway parts. So here we have the sliding hatch 
uh, as designed by Giannis. And uh, those parts are not in the kit, but there is enough plywood left over to fabricate those parts. Um, for the around the world version, uh, I suspect that you wouldn't have this particular hatch um, design. And so in the observation dome, in that case, you might choose to leave out this panel, uh, which is the floor of the sort of turtle or garage for the sliding hatch. And um, instead, you would just install a weather tight hatch or whatever hatch you want in the uh, slanted frame here. And in the kit, the slanted frame is going to be manufactured as a solid bulkhead, so you can cut whatever size hatch um, you want into uh, that slanted frame. Um, we have done uh, a set of ports, uh, port lights in the side of the shear strake. Uh, to the size shown in the plans as well as in the observation dome side and forward port. These would be polycarbonate and in the kit we've got a uh, nine millimeter inside trim ring doublers um, to give you extra meat to fasten the polycarbonate to from the outside. So the polycarbonate is uh, 20 millimeters wider than, uh, than the actual cutout uh, for fasteners. Uh, we haven't made any any cutouts in the deck panel, uh, the cabin top panel. There's two hatches shown: a vent hatch and a egress hatch in the forward part of the of the um, of the hall. There, those are solid. Uh, this panel is, is a solid piece in the kit, uh, except it's split down uh, just behind bulkhead D1 with a butt block. Um, frame E, uh, we've we've added a, a bulkhead up to the crash box height on frame E. We've also, um, I believe this bulkhead was shown in the plans, but um, we've also included this uh, crash box top in the kit. Um, you're seeing it in half section here, but you, you get the full piece obviously. Um, and so this was the crash box. And we've also taken the, the knee, the stem knee, um, as drawn in the plans and we've extended it if I can grab grab it here We've extended it back to frame E and notched the bottom beam of frame E so that the knee actually um, uh, Dados into that frame which helps to locate the the stem the stem is in two pieces There's a, a inner stem and then a stem cap and those are uh, CNC cut and I'll, I'll get into the details of those in a little bit so um, what else? Uh, we've designed in all the butt blocks for the side, chine, and bottom planking, uh, as well as the doubler for the um, for the skeg and the chain plate reinforcement. Uh, we've really tried to think of everything um, that we could. So, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and get into some of the uh, details of the parts. All right, this is the part sheet as of today, May 10th. Um, this is all of the parts that are CNC cut in the kit. Um, so what, you, what you're seeing here, uh, all the black lines are obviously uh, nine millimeter plywood. All of these parts come out of 25 sheets of nine millimeter marine plywood. Uh, so there's the sheets and the brown parts obviously are solid timber. Those are also CNC cut. Um, and the blue dashed lines here are pen lines. So these are drawn by a ballpoint pen um, using the CNC machine. And we use that for all the part numbering and, uh, uh, and also for drawing on reference lines, which I'll get to in a little bit. On the frames, uh, this kit is unique in that it has a lot of solid timber uh, framing because it's not uh, a stitch and glue boat. It's, it's frame and plank uh, construction. So um, on the inside of all the frames, we have uh, you know, solid timber framing. So just in this example, here we have frame E. And so here are the, uh, the timber parts for frame E. So this is, you know, to the plan. We have a top beam, side, side pieces, uh, chime pieces, and then we have various gussets that connect over the joints. 
Uh, frame E also has a second uh, beam on the aft side. Uh, here's that uh, frame that's on the back side of frame E. Uh, there's the dado for the, the stem knee. And uh, you can see all these pieces are numbered uh, with a frame letter and then a number. And usually they're going in a circular pattern. So I have E1, E2, E3, E4. And because all these parts look very similar, we've also added a uh, reference uh, identifier. And that's this little circle here. It's about a four millimeter diameter circle. The circle is on any part, especially the small parts, where it's not clear which way they might go. So for example, this gusset E9, the dot indicates the topmost uh, corner or the innermost corner. So in this case, if you're just looking at this part, you would see the dot and basically if you pinched the part at the dot with your fingers and let the part fall by gravity, that's kind of the orientation that the part would take in the, in the frame. So that will hopefully um, help to you know, position these parts properly because this part is almost but not quite uh, a mirror image for an aft. And that brings up another point in the kit, all the parts, um, many of the parts are port and starboard. For example, we have two E9s. Uh, and it would be really easy to just take this part and copy it and cut out two of them. Um, the problem with that is that when you put this part in the correct spot over here, it, uh, if you have the pen line facing the user, then the part's upside down. So we take the extra step to actually uh, include a port and a starboard proper port uh, part. So you will get a port and a starboard part. And so when you assemble the frame, all of the uh, indicator marks will be facing the user um, in pretty much every case. Uh, In order to keep from losing all these gussets, we've combined the gussets for each frame into clusters. So here is um, a gusset cluster for frame A, um, and here's the other one. So these, uh, these parts here contain three gussets connected with small plywood bridges, and this one has four gussets with bridges. And this is just um, helpful when CNC cutting that we don't have these tiny pieces flying all over the place. So these would just be broken it, broken apart and then um, a quick sand to uh, clean up these bridges. Here is frame D1. This is the mass support frame. And this is a good example of one of the frames that is a solid plywood frame. And you can see all the blue lines are reference lines. So when you assemble this frame, you'll put the butt block across the uh, joint on the forward side of the frame. And, uh, and you've got these lines referencing where all the cleats go, all the framing. So here's all the framing for um, frame D1. And you can see it's similar. It's, it's ringed with these uh, timber pieces that are all numbered with the dots and the, and the lettering. We have uh, frame D and also frame D1. And so with the part numbering, frame D is uh, numbered with a D and frame D1 is numbered with a hyphenated D. Um, that's, you know, that's the way we did, decided to do it. So, um, uh, yeah, so these red parts, uh, these parts are the keel floors and the posts for the mast. And these are too thick to be CNC cut. Um, so what we've decided to do is include templates for these uh, keel, for keel floors here. And these are just uh, dimensional stock. So this is something that could be supplied in a full timber kit, uh, or these, these oak pieces could be um, sourced locally by the builder and cut. And I'll show you really quickly the template for that. So here's a template for the keel floors. Um, the keel floors have obviously a forward and aft edge. So here we have the five keel floor timbers. Um, the black line is the forward edge of the, of the true uh, cutout for that, um, for that chine uh, log. And the red line is the aft edge. So what we've done for the templates is we've taken the, the absolute outer perimeter of those two lines and provided that as a template. So you could cut all these parts out on a bandsaw. And when you fit them into the jig, you could do your final beveling and, uh, and not worry about uh, you know, cutting away too much material. So this is a one-to-one -one template of the half uh, size of the, uh, of the keel floors. 
Uh, the other frames follow the same logic. Um, uh, here we have frame C. We've added in the kit these partial bulkheads for frame C where they go underneath the bunk tops. Um, frame S, we named uh, S for slant. It's the slanted frame, which is the companionway frame. And here you can see this uh, the bulkhead part of the frame, the plywood part, is in three pieces because it's too large. So there's a butt block here at the bottom. And there's a forward and aft side. Frame S is one of the more complicated frames. Um, here we have the forward side and all the pieces associated with the forward side and the aft side. Um, and for assembly of the frames, we have a sheet showing um, how the parts go onto the plywood. Um, frame S is also unique in that it's, it's at such an angle to the other parts. So a few of the details there. The, uh, the top beam here, uh, which is S8, is left proud of the plywood bulkhead, and then it's beveled uh, to receive the, uh, the foredeck. Um, we've also given the bevel for the bottom uh, of frame S, uh, and that's where it intersects with the bottom planking. And also on the aft side of frame S, here we have the, the um, framing that supports the side deck, the seat top, and the cockpit sole. And those can also be beveled prior to assembly um, of the frame itself. The dimensions of all these match the plans uh, in almost every case. Giannis uh, really did a very nice job with the plans, and we found all the dimensions to be uh, very accurate. And so you'll find these dimensions match with the plans, which they should do because it's the same boat. And um, here's another example um, of a frame. You know, we try to think of what information will you need to assemble this frame and uh, helpful information is like diagonals here for checking the squareness of the frame and uh, the overall dimensions of course but because the parts are all pre-notched uh, to the minimum notch for the various stringers we can't measure straight to the corner very easily so you know we've we've made an effort to try to mark where we're actually measuring to um, so you can hook your tape measure, for example, on this corner and send it across to this space and check your diagonal in that way. Uh, the transom uh, frame uh, and also frame A are, are both uh, solid plywood frames. Here they are here and here. And they both have a fair amount of framing. Um, the transom frame could be assembled uh, using the transom as the template. So here's the pen lines all drawn on the on the transom. So you could lay all your transom framing onto the transom and glue down all your gussets and you could install that in the jig without the actual transom panel. Um, and that's nice because you can then let your battens and your um, side stringers uh, run, you know, fly past the transom, trim them off later, and then glue the transom panel on. Uh, there aren't any, dim any dimensions given for the transom because they're all drawn. All the parts locations are drawn on the transom. Um, there is another sheet in the uh, kit plans that shows all these um, parts in a larger scale because it's difficult to read uh, all the numbers here for the bulkheads. In addition to all of the um, frames. We have CNC cut parts for the stem, the stem cap, and also the, um, the knee gusset. Uh, the knee is in two layers, uh, so it's laminated together. Um, and we've also provided a sheet uh, that gives that knee shape as well as the inner stem in full size uh, so that if you are building from plans and you can get your hands on this sheet, um, you could cut these parts out uh, and fit them in because that will help you to locate um, frame E and also the stem. Uh, and that also leads me over to this uh, jig drawing. So we've, we've designed a strong back uh, with dimensions for building the jig on. In the US, this is uh, two by six dimensional lumber, which is 38 millimeters by 140 millimeters. The actual size of the jig itself does not really matter. It could be it could be any material really. We've tried to um, dimension it so that 
we're referencing the inside of the framing. So you could build this out of any material. And we have these upright posts here, which in the US I would use two by fours, but whatever is available anywhere. Um, and it really doesn't matter for that matter. But uh, this frame, this uh, sheet shows all the frames um, in their location on the jig with the height of the frame above the jig line and also the location of the frame uh, relative to the transom as uh, which is as they were designed as where they were dimensioned um, in the plans uh, the stem uh, we've given a height for the top of the CNC cut stem and the knee and you can you can see here where the the stem knee is is um, dadoed into the bottom of frame E and so we've got an offset for the stem which gives you the stem rake um, and the stem is fastened on to the forward side of, uh, of a little upright here and the height of the stem is provided there. Uh, we've also have uh, CNC cut um, deck beams. There are four deck beams, three um, additional bottom floors and also some uh, fore and aft beams um, included as well as uh, these are plywood templates for the skeg and rudder, which we were able to fit in the sheets as well. Uh, these are the polycarbonate shapes for the port lights, and those are also provided at one-to-one -one scale if you want to cut out your own port lights. Um, and if you want to do something different for the ports, then you should just contact your kit manufacturer and say, please cut me out a, uh, a shear strake panel that does not have any cutouts in it. And I'm sure they'd be happy to do that, and you could put in your own uh, ports if you wanted to do larger or smaller or whatever. Um, I think that just about covers the kit parts. Um, and uh, so here are the solid timber parts uh, nested in the boards. And so we CNC cut these parts uh, directly into boards. These boards are 8 inches by 96 inches or um, 2440 by 203 and all these parts are finished thickness of 22 millimeters um, so the way we typically do that is we mill uh, we surface the top of the board we draw our location uh, information with the pen on the parts and then we mill out these shapes in the board but we don't cut all the way through so we leave a skin on the bottom of the board which you can then plane off through the thickness planer and all these parts just fall onto the floor it's 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 brilliant every time I do it I, I enjoy it <laughs> um, so there you can see all the solid timber parts with the exception of the um, of the mass supports posts and the keel floors which brings me over to this model here these two models are all the parts that are not included in the CNC cut kit, but could be included in a full timber kit depending on your kit supplier. So um, this top one shows all of the uh, hull stringer material um, as well as the length of each of these, which will be helpful also for someone building from plans. Uh, these are the exact lengths of the parts, so you'd want to add a little bit um, for, for sizing these. Um, so those are the chine uh, uh, battens or uh, chine logs or uh, you know whatever you want to call these particular pieces, the chine pieces. And these are the panel stiffeners, the uh, stringers for the chine uh, planking and side planking. And here we have this other model. These purple parts are not included in the kit uh, sheet that I just showed you. Uh, neither are the keel, keel floors. So these are all either sourced by the builder and, and these parts here. These are the um, athwart ship parts that uh, are clearly identified in the plans. Um, you got all this grain running across here and uh, you got your mass sitting right here. So you know you want these particular pieces of timber to be nice and strong. These could be supplied by the uh, kit manufacturer or they could be just cut you know by the builder. These other pieces that you see, these are uh, framing pieces for the bunk top. 
These are not included in the kit. Um, they could be, again, these pieces could be included in the kit, but they are not CNC cut. So um, this would be an additional timber, uh, you know, package that would uh, accompany the kit that you would, you would rip all these pieces out. Um, so these are all the cockpit uh, cleats for supporting the sole, the seat tops, uh, the backrest um, combings, and the side decks. And those are eight pieces, uh, and there's the size of those if you're um, following along at home. There's also a few pieces of solid timber in the observation dome, which I didn't dimension out, as well as a frame, uh, a frame around the top of the crash box. Uh, while I'm here in the model, this is a displacement model of the uh, of the 580, and so you can screenshot this if you're interested in the displacement. Uh, we have the displacement at the design waterline and also at uh, minus 10 to minus 80 millimeters uh, of displacement. And you can see um, it's about 75 kilograms per centimeter of immersion. Um, since we just got some clarification on the glassing schedule, um, I decided to also show some surface areas. So this is the total surface area of all the hull panels. 20.2 uh, square meters and all of the deck panels which includes all the cockpit panels is 14.6 square meters and in our case at least for kits in our area in the US um, we will probably be cutting all of the um, plywood components from 9 millimeter Akumi marine plywood because we uh, don't have access to 10 millimeter without special ordering it so in that case, the hull lamination, the outer lamination uh, for the 9mm Akumi was given as 1100, uh, 1,170 grams per square meter and for the deck 430 grams per square meter. And so um, I converted that into ounces per square yard for our uh, U.S. Um, glass purchasing. And so for the hull, the outer lamination would be two layers of 1,700 ounce. Um, or 1700, which is 17.9 ounce, and for the deck it'd be a single layer of 1200, which is 12 and a half ounce, uh, which is very close. And then of course the joints are also taped with fiberglass, um, and then it's just the, this is just the outer lamination to um, to bring the uh, the hull planking up to uh, the required strength. This is another little addendum sheet that we did. Um, and uh, this is showing the dimensions of the bunk side. So in the kit, this is uh, uh, right here. And I've got my dots turned off. Let me turn the dots back on here. Bear with me one second. They just get big when I zoom out. Uh, these are parts 24, 25, and 26 is the butt block. And you can see those are listed as bunk sides fore and aft. And so if you're building from plans, um, this part is nice to have, and I'll show you why in a second. But this is that part dimensioned out. If you're building from plans, you could cut this part out, and uh, it will help you with the jig assembly because what we actually do is we install this part um, into frame A and frame D1 uh, as part of the jig assembly. So, yeah. all right, here's the frames. Um, floating in space, and uh, I'll just give you a quick view of each one, uh, starting at the transom. There's the transom with all its framing. This is frame A, um, and again, this gives you an idea of all the notching that's been pre-done in these kit parts. So you've got notching already done for all of the support for the, inside the cockpit. Um, here is the slanted frame. Fore and aft, there you can see that butt block on the slanted frame. This red line indicates the uh, amount that this top beam is left proud. It's actually not shown proud there in that particular view, but uh, it, it's the part is, is uh, left extra tall. Uh, frame B is uh, the only frame that doesn't have any uh, cross the top support, so this is a temporary, um, you know, one by four or something like that just to help uh, keep that frame from, uh, from moving around. Uh, frame C uh, is the next uh, frame in the bunk, in the fore part of the bunk. 
Frame C is where the galley starts, the galley box. And so there's the fore and aft part of C. Frame C does not have any gussets on the on this part of the um, on the forward side of the lower chine because there is a floor timber um, running across uh, the forward side of frame C. Also, this is um, uh, I don't want to get anybody confused. So this bottom part of frame C we actually changed um, because of the way this cutout is. Um, let me jump back over to the kit parts. Uh, frame C there you can see we actually sent the bottom beam all the way out as opposed to sending C2 down um, so basically the notch is on this piece as opposed to on that piece um, and the reason for that is just for uh, the um, integrity of that of that particular um, of that particular piece sorry it took me a while to get back uh, just looked a little bit fragile there so uh, just to clarify that. So there's frame D1. You can see the purple pieces again. Those would be um, not CNC cut in addition to these uh, these other pieces behind this plywood uh, cap over the mass support. The aft side of frame D1 of course is a smooth bulkhead, watertight bulkhead, and we'll get to these notches in a second. Um, when uh, the frame D1 is assembled, uh, we leave off the forward and aft uh, top beams. So this uh, beam here is uh, glued across the aft top edge of frame D1 and this one across the forward edge of the mass support. But we uh, want to leave this one off for the jig assembly so that it doesn't interfere with our support for supporting the bulkhead. And this one we want to leave off because a lot of it's going to get cut away when we bevel the top of D1 for the foredeck. Um, here we have frame D. Frame D is a pretty simple one. It's uh, symmetrical um, fore and aft. And of course frame E with that um, crash box um, bulkhead on the aft face and the extra um, uh, beam across the uh, back side that uh, supports the hardware for the baby stay. And um, here uh, is another detail. The forward part of the beam on uh, frame E is uh, is notched out to receive the uh, king uh, king uh, plank uh, beams uh, that support the foredeck uh, and take the compression loads from the forestay. And um, also, these uh, top beams are notched. You'll notice for a plywood butt block which joins the two halves of the deck. So those are all the frames. Um, in addition to those assembled, you will also assemble the bunk side uh, piece, which is uh, the two pieces fore and aft of the bunk side, as well as the um, one of the cleats, uh, the, the uh, cleat that runs forward and aft, uh, this one right here, and that would just stiffen up that panel. So this would be a little bit of a sub-assembly, and this leads us into the jig. Here we have the, um, the jig. I'm actually going to jump over to this one instead. So here we have the jig. So here's the strong back. These obviously are our temporary support pieces. And uh, here you can kind of see what we've, uh, what we've come up with. This is kind of the reveal. Um, frame, uh, these two frames, uh, B and C, uh, they actually hang by this uh, cockpit uh, by the bunk top sides and so they don't require any other support than that. You can see the bunk sides are pre-notched for all the keel floor timbers uh, which locates those fore and aft and the bunk tops, uh, the bunk sides have these tabs and uh, now you can see the purpose of those notches in D1. The tabs slip through those notches and then um, the bunk side can be secured to the mass support post. Um, and in the back, we have similar tabs going through um, frame A. Yep, frame A. <laughs> uh, and can be f fastened to the side of that vertical framing. The slanted frame, um, it's also notched out. And so the slanted frame drops right into the bunk sides and of course um, these two frames 
uh, drop down into those notches as well. So that locates those frames. So really all the, the only thing you're really having to do is establish the vertical height of the uh, frame D1 and frame A and all these other pieces should fall into place. There's a dimension provided for the location of the slant frame at the bottom and uh, it's clear of the floor by a little bit. Um, the side panel uh, also comes into play here because the side panel in the kit, um, although it's made up of three pieces with butt blocks, these blue lines you can see are going to be CNC drawn on the inside of the side panel and they all have the frame locations um, indicated on them. So if I go up to the next step here, you can see I've got the side panels bent around the jig and this is helpful as a double check but also for um, alignment of all these frames uh, both vertically and fore and aft because once you assemble this side plank um, you can't uh, you can't really uh, get these frames out of alignment as long as they are lined up uh, on these lines and the side panel stringer that runs through the middle of the side panel you know these notches on the frames that locates each frame uh, vertically and the sidelines locate it fore and aft um, so in this <clears throat> in this render here um, the assembly from the previous step is grayed out and um, in order to establish the location of the transom there are a number of options but the easiest one is to actually use the cockpit sides from the kit and uh, the cockpit sides will butt uh, right up to the aft face of um, frame S and right up to the inside face of the transom and that locates uh, that locates the transom exactly um, uh, the other way to do it, of course, is with the side panel. So you can temporarily uh, hold the side panel up to the framing, and the side panel is cut exactly to size. Um, we left it one millimeter long in case you're using 10 millimeter plywood for the kit. <clears throat> um, but I think everyone's going to be using nine millimeter. So that establishes the the fore and aft again and vertical location of the transom. And okay, it also establishes the location. Of frame D as well as frame E which you can also get from the plans but uh, it's always good to do a double check especially with any pre-cut parts in the kit um, this is something that we stress with all of our kits because all the parts are basically perfectly cut to size you want to take advantage of any part that you can uh, that you can do a dry fit on to see uh, or to use that part as you know an alignment tool for the parts that will go down, go on, you know, further down the process. Another detail here on frame E, due to the extra beam across the aft edge, we've notched out the vertical support for frame E so that the frame uh, is plumb uh, in the jig. Um, on the stem, uh, here are the stem bevels. Um, slightly different top and bottom for the side panel itself so the stem could be pre-beveled um, to these angles similar to the side panel the first layer of bottom planking has uh, all the pen lines drawn on it for the location of both the frames as well as uh, any additional um, uh, floor timbers so for example here is a floor timber that is uh, installed across the bunk top, so it would need to be installed prior to the bottom being glued down um, if you were permanently installing the bunk sides. Um, that brings me to another uh, note. These bunk sides do not have to be installed permanently um, in this way. Uh, you could, in fact, uh, assemble the bunk sides dry with these butt blocks and use them just like we've used them here but at only as an alignment tool because you can actually um, remove the bunk sides after the boat was flipped upright uh, and you would do that if for example you uh, wanted to cut out the floor timbers and install the floor timbers later on in the process rather than uh, in situ here as shown 
um, before the bottom planking was glued on. And it may turn out that that's an easier way to install the, the, um, these uh, keel floor timbers. But um, I think it's possible that they could be installed into the jig um, pre-notched like we've shown here. But again, if that, if that for some reason ends up not working out for people, then um, you would simply remove the bunk side panel after the boat was planked, uh, install your um, keel timbers, and then reinstall the bunk, uh, the bunk side panels. So the bottom plank can also be used as an alignment tool, of course, um, to locate the frames and um, you know just more fore and aft uh, position uh, references, basically. I think that just about covers everything in this drawing. Um, so in the next one up, you can see we've installed all of our battens. So um, the, the frames, while they are all pre-notched for the battens, uh, they still require a fair amount of beveling. And so just to give you an example of one of the more extreme cases, up here on frame E, all the parts are cut out to the aft edge of the frame. So you can see looking down this edge of frame E, the amount of beveling that's going to be needed on frame E. And also, the while the aft part of the notch is CNC cut, the forward part of the notch is going to have to be let in further by the builder, either with like a die grinder tool or a chisel. Um, and frame E is the most extreme example, of course, because it has the most um, taper to the bow, but frame D will also require beveling. Again, you can see here the forward edge of frame D is outside the line of the planking, and the aft edge is, um, is at the zero line. Um, you know, frame B, on the other hand, is almost a, a midships and so requires almost no beveling. Um, the um, the shear clamp stringer um, in the plans is 22 millimeters by 70 millimeters, um, and it's shown here. the uh, The gray part here is a full 70 millimeter tall uh, piece running for for to aft, but it's only needed uh, the full height in the area of the cabin. So um, this could be installed as a full 70 millimeter tall uh, stringer and then cut down along the side deck portion and the fore deck portion. Uh, but I think it could also be installed as a 40 millimeter by 22 millimeter piece and then an additional piece glued to the top of it, um, which eventually supports the um, shear strike panel. Um, up at the uh, forefoot here, you can see uh, these two chine um, battens coming together alongside the knee and so this is just a little bit of detail of how those would intersect with the knee and um, we've already applied some bow round to the to the forefoot here built into the um, built into the inner stem and for that reason the stem the, the height of the stem does not match uh, the height of the stem in the plans but that's only because we've already removed some material uh, from the bottom of the stem. Uh, the stem is pre-notched for the for the battens here and here. It's not notched for these two uh, chine stringers uh, because it would just waste away the stem here. So I think it is okay to butt these into the backside of the stem. But uh, if not, these could be uh, partially let into the stem, uh, or the inside faces of these stringers could be tapered down so that uh, not as much uh, notching is required of the stem so that we don't weaken the stem right across here. But in the kit, this, this, is, this area is not notched, although these uh, intersections are drawn on the stem with pen. Um, I think that about covers uh, this drawing here. So again, the side and bottom panels can be thought of almost like templates um, at this stage because they can be dry fit onto the side of the hull to uh, double check the location and alignment of all the framing on the jig. And then they can be taken off the boat um, and uh, to allow for the installation of all the battens. 
and all the beveling. Um, again, all these battens are just as per the plans. So um, the chine batten here, for example, is installed and then it's beveled half and half exactly down the midline um, for the side panel. Um, just, to, just to reiterate, the side panel is cut exactly to shape. So the forward edge of the side panel will line up exactly with the forward edge of the inner stem and the aft edge exactly with the aft edge of the transom. If you, um, uh, so, that, so this, the planking schedule is as designed here would be side panel, then chine panel, then bottom panel. And the chine panel, uh, this is what we're calling the chine plank here. It's also in three pieces with butt blocks. Um, it would be installed in three pieces. Um, so here we have uh, the center portion of the chine panel with the butt blocks. And here I'll go ahead and put the side plank in place. So let's imagine we've just glued on the side planking. Uh, so there's the side planking in place. And it would require beveling along this edge to uh, receive the chine plank that would, would, would overlap it ever so slightly. So here I'm going to install the uh, middle portion of the chine plank next. Okay, so there's the middle portion of the chine, uh, the chine plank. The, the chine plank is left um, with extra material uh, on, the, on the top and bottom edges for beveling. So um, there should be plenty of material for gluing that on. And then the forward and aft portion of the chime panel would go down next. Um, again, there will be extra material uh, along the top edge of, uh, of the chine plank that would then be beveled off flat uh, for the bottom planking. So finally, here we have the bottom plank. So that's the first layer of bottom planking. There's a butt block for the bottom planking here, just aft of frame B and also just ahead of frame D. That's the way it worked out in the sheets. Um, wanted to try to keep the joints out of the center portion of the boat. And I'll just jump down here and show you the uh, second layer of bottom planking. Here is the butt block for the first layer of bottom planking, right here and here. The second layer of bottom planking, which is on the outside, is joined here just forward of the slanted frame and here right between the first two keel timbers and of course you'll have the uh, the keel plate spanning across those timbers so there'll be no issue there so now we've got we've got the hull planked and um, you would finish off your bow round and the stem cap uh, would be installed after planking. Um, here is the stem cap. Of course, it's larger than the stem, uh, the, than the inner stem, so that it um, catches the outer face of the side planking. I have this drawing <clears throat> shows all of the additional pieces that would be installed after uh, planking and flipping. Um, with the exception of the bunk side, if you decided to install your keel timbers uh, after the fact. So if your, keel, if your keel timbers are already installed, then this is what you got. Uh, so there is uh, a forward and aft uh, floor beam. So we have number five here and number seven here. We have a skeg doubler that goes um, above the skeg. And uh, frame seven, our beam number seven is datoed out for that doubler. We have the um, doublers here on the inside of the hull for the chain plates. We have uh, the uh, bunk side, which, or excuse me, the cockpit side, which was uh, being used, if you remember, to uh, locate the slant frame and the transom. Um, and that can be permanently installed after the uh, all these uh, cockpit cleats are installed and uh, the the cockpit side and the seat back are intended to be installed first 
followed by the um, cockpit sole, seat top, and side deck. So I'll go ahead and move those down into position. So those, um, just the way the plywood overlaps, that's how those are, the order in which those are intended is the, the vertical panels first and then the horizontal panels like that. Um, here we have uh, the framing for the bunk tops, which would be installed now. So we have this outer, outer cleat that's just piecemeal fitted between the frames uh, B and C and uh, some cleats across the tops of those partial bulkheads as well as a forward and a half cleat for the bunk top panel. Uh, here we have the cockpit sole, which is supplied in uh, two pieces, a forward and a half piece. It's not notched out for this frame, and it, depending on what you want to do with it, I know some people are going to cut this up to create a uh, thwart ship's uh, sleeping bunk, so um, builders can do as they please with that. Uh, we have this little partial bulkhead, which um, can be installed after the boat is flipped, as well as the framing for the crash box and, of course, the top to the crash box, which the top the top for the crash box is maybe optional, but um, it, could, it could just be glassed over, but it's nice to have a solid top for that. Um, here we have the two uh, king plank beams. Um, these, again, are notched into the forward part of frame E, and they are also... Um, I believe they're notched into, no, they're not, I'm sorry. Um, I believe they're notched into the stem. Uh, okay, well that may be something we need to add is a notch in the stem uh, for those um, king plank beams. So there's, uh, there's the first little correction I found. Um, okay, then we have uh, the deck beams. There are four deck beams uh, as well as... Um, the uh, stringer here along the top corner of the cabin uh, that will support the, um, the shear strake. So here we have the shear strake. Um, it's in two pieces with a butt block, and there's the butt block there just forward of frame D1. Uh, the, the shear strake has, again, those um, plywood doublers for the port lights, and uh, we can put this into position there's the shear strike on. I won't bother with the port lights. Um, we have a four deck, of course, and we have a, two, a four and an aft uh, cabin top panel. Um, also, these uh, four and a half pieces here and here, uh, and those two, those are the four and a half beams that are also included in the kit. The four and a half butt block for the deck, these three pieces, is provided in the kit as one continuous piece of plywood, which can be cut to fit. Um, and again, these hatchways are shown in the plans and the cabin top is not cut out for those two openings, uh, just to give builders the different options. So I'll go ahead and glue down now the aft portion of the cabin top, which you'll notice is already notched for the observation dome. And if you are not going to be installing the observation dome or you're going to do something totally different, um, your kit supplier can give you an extra piece of plywood or omit this sheet because these two pieces take up just about a full sheet of plywood. Uh, here they are right here. So if you didn't want this cut out, you're going to need uh, an additional sheet um, because these are, these are fairly large panels. Um, if you are going to do the observation dome, then uh, you're ready to go. You'll cut. You'll first. You'll first glue down um, these two cleat rails here, fore and aft. Um, this one here, and that will support the sides of the dome, uh, the front part of the dome, and then this dome floor, this orange piece here, would be installed if you were going to do the sliding hatch uh, as designed, and. Um, and then once these, uh, once the observation dome was installed, you could then cut away uh, the center portion of this deck beam as it wouldn't be needed. Um, uh, here's a um, finished rendered model, um, and uh, we've taken the liberty of putting a waterline on the boat. Um, I have dimensions for this particular waterline. If anyone is interested, that'll be with the. 
um, with the kit plans themselves. Um, of course, we have our BNB wind vane drawn on there, but uh, anyone, uh, you know, the wind vane, I think, uh, guys have been looking at the various options, but I think this would be a good one. Um, quick plug for our wind vane. It does have the advantage that um, it tips up. So uh, it's on a pivot and it can be rotated completely up out of the water uh, for servicing. Um, we had to develop a kick up wind vane for our shallow draft boats and uh, people are waiting on the plans for that, but they'll come, be coming out shortly. Um, these other parts, I think, are being uh, worked on as we speak. You know, the sails, the mast, the rigging, and possibly these pulpit hardware pieces. Um, we've just rendered these quickly from uh, from the plans as provided. But um, it's nice to see the boat all painted. Um, the shape looks really nice. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a good looking boat. So that's all I have for the tour of the 580 kit. I um, hope you enjoyed. And as always, if you have any comments or suggestions for anything that I went over too fast um, or would like a more detailed look at, please just leave a link uh, or a comment below. And as far as pricing for the kits, uh, BNB Yacht Designs will be publishing a public estimate for a complete kit and all of the various options that we'll be offering. Uh, very soon within within the week um, and if you've already contacted me we're inquiring about a kit and haven't heard from me um, shoot me another email because I may have just overlooked you um, so thanks a lot thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon Bye.